Well, that was a very weird and quiet sequence. Why the hell wasn't I talking during any of that? Anyway, we have a bit of a video to make today. Very fun one, so buckle up. So for some of my younger, more new viewers, um, y'all probably don't know this, but I, Lizzie, am an anime fan. Actually, you might have known that because I've made a variety of videos where I put anime pictures in them. Oh, this is getting off to an awkward start. The point that I'm trying to make here is that I'm an anime fan. And as a result, I collect anime themed dolls or like more specifically dolls based around characters from anime that I enjoy. The main supplier of those dolls would be the Pulip brand. Um, if you guys don't know what Pulip is, it's a Japanese Korean brand. I don't actually remember where it started. I believe it's Japan, but some people have told me Korea. I'm pretty sure it's Japan though. But basically the brand is called Pulip, spelled P-U-L-L-I-P, and I've made a variety of videos on the dolls in the past. I don't have any in here. Yes, I do. One second. Getting up again. In my doll room over here, in the closet of doom, I actually have a Pulip doll. No, I don't. That is an empty box. Where the hell is Karomi? Where is she? karomi has gone missing, but I have a box here for one. This is what pull-up dolls look like. This is pull-up Ala. I got her a couple years ago. Yeah, the dolls are really old and they're from Japan. Yeah, that's literally Japanese text. I'm so dumb. The moral of the story is I've spent a lot of money on those dolls. They're actually what made my channel get popular in the first place. I used to make a lot of pull-up videos. You can look them up on my channel. They're pretty old, but I had a lot of fun making them back in the day. They were usually just my dolls talking on the shelves because they are kind of hard to move around the way you move around like a Monster High or Ever After High doll because they are very heavy, very top heavy because of their massive freaking heads. Very big heads, very large. It's giving Rainbow High, but like before Rainbow High was a thing. <laughs> so since I've been collecting the dolls for several years since middle school, I have a couple dream pull-ups that I've been trying to get for a very long time. And recently, I actually got one that I've been wanting since the eighth grade. So, you guys want to hear, oh my god, do you guys want to hear a little, little story? Because we're going to, we're going to tell a story. Our story begins with my friend T, who I will be representing via this Spectra doll. Why? Because she was right there on the shelf and I didn't feel like looking for someone else. So, T, if you ever see this video... You are this doll to me. So this all starts with T posting an Instagram story. It's one of those little challenge things. It's like, send me an anime I've never watched and I'll pick my favorite character from it. That's, that's exactly what it was. It's exactly what she posted on her, little, on her little phone. So I, being myself, took notice of this story and decided to submit an anime that I haven't watched in years as it is the only thing my friends have never watched before. Rosen Maiden. Quick history lesson for some of you, but Rosen Maiden is an anime that I used to be very into. I posted a lot of videos about them on my channel. It's a simple anime with a simple premise. It's like some dolls that are fighting to become human, and they're fighting to become the perfect girl for their creator, and the perfect girl is named Alice for some reason, and basically the main character is this red bitch right there. Yeah, and the human dude. So T, being the straight-coated mother fricker she is, she picks the boring human dude. So naturally, I bully her. He is rightfully horrified by the way that I'm behaving and tells me that she picks Karaki Show instead. I am pleased by this. Another quick history lesson. This is Karaki Show. This is her 2014 version from the Zurich Spulen anime. And this is her 2000 and whatever version from the original Traumand anime. This is relevant, I promise. So T tells me that she likes Karaki Show most. I decide to forgive her and relieve her of her punishment. We end up talking like friends do about the anime, and I tell her that I have the dolls of the, like, characters from the anime, because Rose and Maiden is ultimately an anime about dolls, which is why I got into it in the first place. Actually, the whole reason I found out about it is because of the pull-up dolls, but, like, still, I, I digress. T says she thinks it's really cool, and overall, I end up showing her my doll shelf, which T also says is really cool. But talking about this reminds me of a deep, repressed memory that I have from my past. This is the pull-up version of Karaki Show. Oh, wait, no, wrong one. It's actually the 2014 version from the Xerox Pulin anime, if you remember the pictures that I just showed you. Ah, see, I told you it's relevant. So in that anime, Karaki Show was the main antagonist. Therefore, she got a doll that was widely, widely released, right? Well, in Charmand, Karaki Show wasn't relevant at all. So 
You want to know what became of the doll that she got in that version? While she may be gorgeous, stunning, and the moment, she's also limited to a thousand releases worldwide. And she came out in 2007. So it's a double whammy because I was four years old when this doll was released. And I almost got her in the eighth grade. I recounted my tragic sufferings to T, who didn't really care, but she still like nodded along anyway. And basically, I was just reminded of the fact that I almost got that doll when I was just a little Lizzie. But I didn't because my mom talked me out of it. Damn you, Queen of Hearts. The conversation ended after that, and I was just left alone with my thoughts. Yeah, pretty much. Once alone, I decide to go on eBay and I start looking up the doll again. And you can imagine my surprise when scrolling through the two to 300 mark, I find a certain listing. It's a listing for Karaki Show for an affordable price. Trust me, it's, it's very affordable. She, she usually sells for $700 new in box. So naturally I flip my shit. I said I flip my shit. I'm completely dazed. I'm so dazed that I don't even consider why the doll is so inexpensive before reviewing the picture. You want to know what I saw when I reviewed the images from the listing? Dun, dun, dun! That's right. She was in shit condition. So what did I do from here, dear Lizzie boys? Why am I telling you this story? Well, that's where another character comes into play. A character who I can only represent via a doll who is comically taller than me, even though I'm taller than her and older than her. But I don't, it doesn't matter, it's fine. The eyes, oh my god, her eyes. I will be using this derpy Duchess Swan doll to represent my best friend, Camilla. Get in there, Camilla. Naturally, I end up complaining to Camilla about the doll that I found, because I'm very disappointed, because I was like, damn, I got excited. And for what? She's literally missing an eye. That's when Camilla gets a very bright idea. She offers to fix the doll for me. That's when I remember that Camilla is a doll customizer. And not just a doll com customizer, like, she has experience with pull-ups. She has experience with BJDs, which are very, very large. Look up BJDs if you want ball-jointed dolls. They're crazy. But, like, she has experience with pull-ups. She's made, like, three to four custom pull-ups. And so, like, her taking on this project wouldn't be unrealistic. I totally have faith in her. So I'm like, bitch, are you serious? And she's like, yes, I'm for real. And I was like, you know? So we get to plotting and scheming, looking for a way to make this ridiculous plan work. Because recently, Camilla moved outside of the US into Ecuador, which uh, y'all probably don't know this, but Ecuador doesn't have a door-to-door -door mail service. So I can't send it all directly to her. But she has a sister. A sister who I don't care to represent via doll form. But basically the existence of this sister makes the plan much more likely to work. So here's the plan. So the plan is, I buy the doll from Japan. The doll goes to New York, where Camilla's sister lives. Camilla's sister takes the doll to Ecuador with her, because she's going there to visit her family for the holidays. Camilla gets the doll in Ecuador from her sister. She fixes her, sends her back with her sister to New York, and then her sister finally sends the doll from New York to me. To Lizzie's house, where Lizzie lives, because Lizzie, Lizzie lives somewhere. I hope you guys enjoyed that little visual there. But yeah, basically everything sounds fine and dandy, right? Wrong! Everything is going to shit. Because... Because... We're on a time crunch here, y'all. We have to get the doll to New York from Japan before the 14th, and the day that I'm filming this, it is already the 6th. It is the 6th. It is... It is the 6th. So... The doll needs to get to where it's supposed to be in a very short amount of time from Japan. So I'm kind of hopeful, crossing my fingers. But if she doesn't get to Japan, if she doesn't get from Japan to New York before the 14th, she's not going to get to Ecuador for many, many months. And then that means that my $280, $309 actually, because of $25 shipping, some bullshit ass tax. It wasn't even shipping, it was just tax. eBay... eBay needs to stop charging tax. eBay just needs to go back to committing tax fraud. Yeah, basically... My doll would just be sitting in Camilla's sister's house until she can go back to Ecuador with her. And I don't want that to happen. I want her to just go to where she needs to be so she can come back to me. Because when I get her, she'll have a type 4 pullet body. She'll have a type 4 eye mechanism. She'll have her wig properly attached. It'll be great. She'll even have new eyes because Camilla can make eyes and shit. Like, I didn't even mention that. Camilla's so talented, she knows how to make pullet eyes. She can just recreate the eyes. She draws them digitally because she's an artist too. She can do it all. 
It's so cool. It's so cool. I'm not trying to kiss my best friend's ass or anything, but she is very cool. She is so cool, bestie. I know she's probably going to watch this video. You're still, I still hate you, but I love you, you know, bestie. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, yeah. So that's, that's what's been going through my head the last few days. I finished my finals, bought myself a doll that I've been wanting since the eighth grade. And now I get to get her all fixed up. Before some of y'all ask, oh, Lizzie, why didn't you just buy her new? Allow me to explain the pullet body type hierarchy system. In Polip's nearly 20-year run, she has had four different body types. The first type, the second, third, and fourth. So, the first type was known for the neck breaking because they didn't know how to support such a large head on such a small body. The second type was known for the neck melting. It was called neck melt. I, I don't know why the neck was melting, but it was. Type 3 was known for wrist breakage because of the weird way that the wrists look. I have a type 3 body doll. I'll probably compare Karaki Show to it when I get her. But, like... It's weird. Just watch my Allo review if you want to see what I mean, or any of my old Rosen Maidens. So, like, uh, Shinku, Suginto, and uh, So Seisuke. Not Suginto. Look, just watch my pull-up reviews. Do it. Do it now. Anyway, type 3 was known for brittle plastic at the wrist, which would cause them to break. Type 4 doesn't have any of these issues. Type 4 is basically the superior body and has been in use since it was released. They haven't replaced it at all. Because there's no reason to. Why fix it if it ain't broke, right? So in 2008, they actually corrected the wrist breakage error, the wrist breakage error on the type 3 body, right? But Karaki Show is from 2007. So the likelihood that she would just break fresh out of the box is so high that just buying her new isn't worth it. I feel like it's way more worth it to just buy her like this, get her rebodied on the superior type 4 doll, give her the new eyes and all of that. It saves me like $300, and she'll just look nicer too. In short, I may sound like a maniac to you all for spending that much on a doll who literally looks like the pictures I showed you, but trust me, it's going to be very worth it, and when the doll comes, I'm going to make a very long video on her, maybe even multiple. So I hope you guys will watch that, I hope you guys will continue supporting my channel, and I think we're about done here. Do you have any messages for the crowd, Camilla? Oh yeah, that's right. I didn't ask Camilla to be in this video. <laughs> and before the video ends, I would like to say that I don't know where Lizzie's shoe is. I, I can't find it. But as always, thank you all so much for watching this video. It ran a little longer than usual, but I hope to see you in my next one. And as always, like and subscribe, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!